Recreation in Iowa's lakes contributes millions of dollars to local economies every year. But have you ever wondered what lies beneath the surface of Iowa's Great Lakes? That curiosity led Lloyd Cunningham, a photographer, to don his scuba gear and explore the underwater treasures of Lake Okoboji. I have a real passion for underwater photography and I have a real love of the Iowa Great Lakes and, and West Lake Okoboji. I've dived in the Clearwater Springs in Florida, I've dived in the Keys, the Caribbean, and even in the Baja Peninsula, but this is my favorite place to dive. Weeks before a summertime rush of visitors flood the cool waters of West Lake Okoboji, Lloyd Cunningham is already here. Donning a wetsuit with scuba gear in hand, Lloyd prepares for an icy dip in 40 degree water. I didn't get any weight this winter, it just got softer. It's a challenge. This is not recreational diving to dive in 40 degree water. And dives are generally short. Uh, I typically dive on, in this cold water uh, not more than once a day and a dive of not more than about 35 minutes because you will chill all the way to the core. This excursion is much more than recreation. It's a trip back in time. From a 1940s ice truck to 100-year-old structures, Cunningham opens an underwater gateway for the rest of us. The bottom of the lake is, uh, is uh, a time capsule, in my view, of collectibles, of interesting parts of the lake's history and past. That's, I think, the, the major draw of the lake for me. Every dive in West Lake Okoboji is a treasure hunt. Lloyd, a retired newspaper photographer for the Argus Leader in Sioux Falls, spent his weekdays documenting fires, accidents, and Friday night football. He spent his free time here, at West Lake Okoboji. Much to the surprise of many longtime Iowans, this glacial water body is a hidden scuba diving gem. The lake is 134, 138 feet deep, depending upon where you actually drop your, your depth finder. And uh, uh, that depth lends itself to clear water. Anything that falls into the lake, sediment, silts, and sands that you'd see in Midwest lakes, uh, all settles through that top layer of uh, water down to the bottom, leaving the top very, very clear. Okoboji was formed by the Wisconsin Glacier more than 100,000 years ago. One of only three blue water lakes in the entire world, visibility can extend 40 feet during peak periods. However, that window is only briefly open. The spring days of mid-May present the best opportunity to catch a glimpse of the lake bottom. We journeyed alongside Lloyd from the water's edge to a structure brimming with fish. There is a tower uh, in the bottom of the lake. This was a water intake built by the city of Milford in about 1917. The tower is roughly 15 feet tall. It's a crib full of stone at the bottom and it holds upright an eight inch uh, iron pipe. Uh, it was built on the ice and then lowered to the bottom in 30 feet of water. That tower provided water uh, for drinking water and fire protection water for the town of Milford until about 1945. It's been replaced by other intakes now, but it's still a haven for panfish and a hunting ground for walleye and pike. Lloyd has clocked more than 350 dives in Okoboji, and while his first-hand accounts keep him coming back, it is underwater photography that has captivated residents and tourists alike. It was amazing to me the first time I was on the bottom of this lake, I recognized that I could actually make pictures here. Making a good underwater photograph is, uh, is uh, a balance of working with the water, working with the light, working with the visibility that you have, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, taking all those into account as you approach the dive and make the photograph. One of his signature photos is a 1940s era ice truck resting for more than 50 years below the surface, but it requires expert navigation to find. Motoring out to the center of West Lake, Lloyd found his spot in a matter of minutes. On the bottom of West Lake Okoboji is something called the ice truck. In 1948, 
Uh, it slipped off the ice and sank into 22 feet of water in the middle of Smith's Bay. When I began diving in 1992, I'd heard that the boat, the truck was out there, uh, but I could not find anybody who had actually seen it, and most divers had assumed it had rusted away. It has become the most popular dive site, I think, on Westlake Okoboji now. Much of the floating matter in these images was stirred up by our divers. The swirling sediment can create a dark and hazy image. It's just one of the reasons underwater photography requires skill and patience. Good diving practice is that you always dive with a buddy, but when you, uh, when you uh, are diving in water is with a, with a bottom as soft as this bottom that can easily be stirred up by a random or a clumsy kick of a fin, you lose the visibility that you're after when you're trying to make good quality underwater images. So in that case, I mostly dive alone. The ice truck, underwater shipwrecks, fish sanctuaries, these are images that have captivated Lloyd during his dives. But so have the stories behind them. Lloyd says his photographs have drawn the attention of local historians, always curious if he has come across a relic from decades ago. They'll have seen a, a boat sink from their uh, lakeside cabin and they want to know if I, want to, if I know the details. Or they'll ask me what I've seen at the bottom of the lake. Uh, it seems to generate a lot of discussion about what's down there. Uh, um, and I guess that's, that's all part of the fun. Sometimes I discover things that I didn't know were there. Every dive in Westlake Okoboji is a treasure hunt because you never know what kind of an artifact you may recover when you dive in this beautiful lake.